Hi, thank you for coming. Welcome to day one. We are in an odd time, aren't we? A um, lot of good and a lot of challenge. So I wanted to just talk a little bit and do a meditation on what I think this time means and what we can make and get from it. This time we'll have during this pandemic where we are stretched, home, um, a little worried because there's so much unknown. This time is going to have different soul lessons for each of us because we all have individual soul lessons all the time, of course. And then we also have the collective. So each one of us in our own homes will um, hopefully take time to understand what has my pattern been? How can I move forward so I can feel more empowered during this time of so much unknown? What is mine to learn? And on a larger scale, my belief is that we are here during this time experiencing this to learn to live with less, to learn to be okay with the unknown, and there is a lot of unknown, to learn to breathe, take time to nurture again, take time to heal, take time to quiet our minds, learn how to be in stillness. Perhaps this is a good time to learn to meditate. And of course, learning to be present, present with who is around us. Now, I'm working from home with my kids home all the time. Definitely a challenge. And to not take from them, to be present for them even when I'm feeling worry. So this is such a beautiful time to learn so much and how to be present. This is also a time to treat our earth with kindness. You now, what does that mean? Some of us are treating our earth with kindness without consciously choosing that. Beautiful thing. Live more simply. Look for ways to help even though we are in our homes. Be creative. Big important time to learn to live within the unknown while also having faith. We're being given time to regroup, slow down, breathe, cleanse, declutter, settle our homes. We are being given an opportunity to learn to balance the masculine and the feminine our world is very masculine driven. What does that mean? What does it mean to be in feminine? This is a time to play, to laugh. It's also a time to find, like I said, creative ways to give to others. Because we're meant to be there for one another, even when we can't physically. So balancing the masculine and the feminine, that's a whole lot of stuff to say. Um, but I will quickly say the masculine is our action, our reasoning, judgment, critical thinking, organizing. And our feminine is being, nurturing, laughter, creativity, taking care of. We need both. Every human needs both. So during this time, I am consistently supporting my body to the best of my ability with healthy food. Of course, I use my essential oils and I'd love to help you guys with that if anyone's interested. I'm in movement. I am exercising. I'm walking outside with my dogs away from people. There are free online workout classes, which are great. And thank you for all of those people who are offering that to us. And of course, I'm supporting my body by also helping others, supporting my mind, my soul. There are so many things we can do. So we want to be careful that we're not going to shut down or use this time to not take care of ourselves. Keep yourself sharp. Take care of your mind. Take care of your soul. Take care of your heart. And during this time where we are having this global challenge, it's important every day to connect with who you are beyond our external circumstances. You know, my belief is we're a soul in a body. We're a, we're a soul that has a body, 
Our soul is much bigger than our physical body. By becoming aware of your connecting connection to your soul, your higher self, we get to then step into purpose and we feel more grounded. We feel less stress. We can understand better why we are here during this time. What is my spiritual meaning in this life, in this time, in 2020, when we are faced with this huge pandemic? What is this time about? When we pull ourselves out of our pain, of our fear, and look at it from a soul perspective, it's, it's like if you're watching a play and you're in the audience. We get to do that with our own life. It helps us make sense of this nonsense. Curious, how many of you had a feeling that something was coming, that you were preparing? What did that feel like? And now that it's here, what does that feel like? Many people did. Many people knew something was coming. We're going to do two meditations, both of them short. Because we have 20 minutes. The first one, I'd like you to close your eyes, if you will. Feel your feet on the ground. Feel your glutes, your sits bones on that chair. Take some nice, slow, easy inhales and exhales. Inhale, pause, exhale, pause. Inhale, pause, exhale, pause. Allow memories to surface. Think back through your life, any memories that come from childhood to now anything. Let them come. And with each memory, allow it to pass. Some might be blessings, some might be painful. So don't sit in it. Notice it, let it pass. Go back to breathing. See if another one will come. I want you to collectively look at those memories that popped up. Notice which ones came up. Notice if there was a theme. Is there a similar thread with any of those memories? Why do you think they're coming up now? Because of course we have millions of memories. They didn't all come, just some did. Why? Ask, why now? Or maybe you already know. What are you meant to bring forth now? What are you meant to transform? From whatever that theme was, maybe you are giving too much and being resentful, or maybe you didn't step into a risk you wanted to take, or maybe you didn't use your voice. Maybe you didn't feel heard. What is that theme? And still with your eyes closed, Ask, how may I transform that now? How may I transform that now? That's all part of our bigger story and that's our reality. Whatever that challenge was that came up in our memories, you, if you didn't have any challenges that came up, just beautiful memories, oh, that's wonderful. But like most of us, if you have memories that are still coming up that need some work, 
that need to be released because we have to transform it, move out of the shadow into the light of it. What was that? We get to do that now in a very important time to not sit back, but step forward into whatever we want to transform. And that's a really big request. So you get to have some time with that. We're just kind of touching the tip of the iceberg now. What were you saying to yourself during those pieces? What was that theme or, or story that you brought still into the present? Or has it been healed? Just pay attention. For quite a while, I have told my clients, 2020 has, is going to be the year of abundance. I still believe that, even though we are um, potentially suffering a lot of economic crisis and we don't know how long this is going to go on. All of us are going to feel it on some level. Abundance is, yes, financial, but it's so beyond that. Abundance is stepping into whatever brings us freedom in a healthy way. Abundance means love. Abundance means taking action, feeling safe enough to take the action. Abundance is to live the life we are meant to live. Abundance is to give and receive whatever it is we have to give and asking from others what we need. Where are you feeling restricted? Where do you want to open up to abundance in that area? There's still ways for many of us, for all of us, to go after our dreams. And it, even just taking a few steps in that direction now. Transforming whatever those memories were, bringing out where you're meant to go. You know, for me, one of my stories is to learn to be um, a listen better. Learn to listen better. Listen to myself and listen to others. Not in my work, because I do that pretty well, but in my personal life, listen. So what is your story? How will that help you? And we don't have to have an answer. But opening up to wonder. I wonder how to transform this. I wonder what my dreams even are anymore, if you don't know. During this time, we have the time if you make the time just to spend some quiet moments, breathing, emptying your thoughts, going after your dreams, writing, painting, calling people, starting a blog, whatever your piece is, there's so many things you can do. Building something in your backyard. We need sleep, we need to eat. And we, we need to reach out to others. Something called HALT, an acronym. Hungry, angry, lonely, tired. Those are the pieces that really get in our way of connecting our divine self to our physical body. Hungry, angry, lonely, tired. So when we're hungry, when we're angry, when we're lonely, when we're tired, what do we do? We usually go within, right? Or we're angry and snapping but we're still not connecting. We're not connecting to God. We're not connecting to our higher self. We're not connecting to others. We're not in creating mode. Hungry, angry, lonely, tired. Those are pieces we can help most of us. Most of us. Some people really can't help much for the hunger. They can't. But the ones on this call, I know you can. So looking at those pieces, what gets in your way of connecting with yourself? Because when we have those pieces, we're not feeling safe. Hungry, angry, lonely, tired. We're not safe. We don't feel safe. We don't feel safe enough to connect with others, connect to our soul, connect with our body. Oftentimes we keep so busy so we don't have to deal with our feelings. And all that does is just push us further away. All that does is create more anxiety, more depression. So we don't want to pretend things are okay when they're not. We want to step into it, save time for it, process the feelings, recognize our fears, allow them to surface, then choose how to respond to those fears, to move through those fears. 
moving out of fear into a state of balanced masculine and feminine, balanced giving and receiving, balanced work and play. Play is important. So the feminine, a feminine concept I want to talk about, and we're going to do another meditation quickly because we're going to run out of time. Surrender. What does surrender even mean? So we're going to practice surrender. We learn a lot when we practice, and surrender is a very important tool, very important quality. So I'd like you to be in a chair or a couch or a bed where you can rest your head back. So there will be a back, so you can lay your head back. And your feet are either um, on the bed or on the floor. So a bed, a couch, a chair with a headrest. So sit comfortably. Allow yourself to take inhales and exhales. Inhale, pause. Exhale, pause. Shuffle your feet a moment so you can feel them on the ground, if, if they're on the ground. Push your feet into the ground, and if you're on the bed, just flex your feet and push them out, like you're pushing against the wall. Just imagine. And then I want you to start from the top of your head, feeling what's behind you. So feel the bed or the chair or the couch with the back of your head and your shoulders, your scapulas, your spine, all the way down to the tailbone, your sits bones. Feel the surface, the back of your legs on the, on the hamstrings. Feel whatever you're touching, the back of the knees, the shins, all the way down. And again, feeling the feet on the ground. Push, shuffle. And then starting with the feet, you're going to flex and relax. And the calves, flex and relax. So you can really feel the fabric of what you're on. All the way up the body, take a moment flexing every part that's touching and relax flex and relax all the way up until you get to the head again flex the neck flex the skull relax it Feel your body in that state of ah, in that state of relaxation. You're not floating. You're not sitting on air. You're being completely physically supported by something. This is a state of surrender. It's a beautiful first step. to heal through this crisis and to actually truly heal so we're transformed through this challenge time. We need to nurture. We need to feel supported. Sleep, time alone, time with others, eating healthy. We are being called to move beyond the old way of being. We are. To become balanced in masculine and feminine. And in order to do that, yes, we take action. And we also allow ourselves to learn how to be and how to surrender. So taking time to heal and taking time to play. So if you're willing, I'd like you to practice this a few more times until we meet again next Tuesday. Allowing yourself to mindfully connect feel physically supported, and surrender. Have a beautiful week.